Hello everyone, I'm really happy to be here today in CSS Comfort Minia. Thanks to the organization for inviting me to join this conference and give you a talk here. And today I'm going to talk about the path of bringing Focus Visible to WebKit. This is a feature I have been working on during this year, and I'm going to explain the different things that have happened around it. So first, a little introduction about myself. I'm Manuel Rego. I work at Igalia Web Platform Team. Igalia is an open source consultancy that is, has people all around the world, the globe. We have been working on browsers for a long time and we have a lot of committers and reviewers on the different projects. In my case, I've been working implementing web platform features mostly on Chromium and WebKit most of them CSS features, and for that reason, and due to that work, I have been CSS Working Group member since 2017. So I'm quite different profile than most of you in this conference, probably, because I'm actually an implementer of the browser engine and not a use, user of the web platform itself. So just like a small table of contents for today. We are going to do a small introduction around what's Focus Visible and what are the special, the peculiarities of that feature. Then I will explain the open prioritization effort that led to implement this feature on WebKit, the work we have been doing, and also the next steps. So let's start with the introduction around Focus Visible. Maybe most of you already know this. this. Maybe not, so let's just go over this and also explain some tricky things around this feature. So mostly this is the main problem we used to have before Focus Visible was around. Basically, when someone click a button or a link or a div with tap index, things like that, they will let an outline a focus ring or a focus indicator. In this case, in this presentation, I'm always using, using this purple dotted outline to, to, to see it clearly during the presentation. So basically, you click the button, you see the outline. But web authors don't like this, and they want to hide this outline. So they used to do things like focus outline none. But that's a very bad idea, because that breaks accessibility of your website for users that use the keyword to navigate. So when they use the keyword and they reach this button, they will see the old line, so they don't know where the focus is, and that's very bad for accessibility. So nobody should do this outline now. So due to this problem, the solution that the CSS Working Group defined was this focus visible pseudo class. Basically, I will explain what this pseudo class does, and we will go over different examples. And this is part of the spec text, not the current spec text and all the spec text, but I think it's still relevant to understand what is focus visible and, and how it works. So here the spec used to say used to, to say that focus visible applies when the element match focus, so the element is focused. And the user agent decides via some heuristics that the focus should be made evident, so that the focus should be visible, so that there should be a focus ring or a focus indicator on that element. This is the current text on the spec that is like kind of longer, kind of different, but it's still the same idea. The user agent, the browsers, only sometimes indicate focus. So not always that an element is focused, they show a focus ring. So this focus visible pseudo class will allow authors to change the appearance of the focus indicator, but only when it appears, not when without changing when it appears or not. Just if the browser decides it appears, you can customize it. So we mentioned it that there were some kind of heuristics that the browsers use to decide 
when to show or not a focus indicator. Like there are different, and not all the browsers follow exactly the same rules, but they are kind of pretty common to most of them. And the spec try to define this heuristic somehow, despite not all. I mean, not all the browsers can follow them exactly, or that there can be a slight difference between one or the other. And it's not normative text on the spec, so it's not a must, but they are there, and I think they are useful to explain this feature. So one thing that seems pretty evident and pretty clear is that if an element supports Q or input, we should show the focus ring. We should indicate the focus. So basically, that means that any input or text area or a content editable element, when you focus it, you get a focus ring. Doesn't matter if you click on it, if you focus it with a keyboard, you are editing an input and you need to know where you are. So that seems like everyone will agree totally on this, but there is still some kind of particular corner cases or call it like you want. So what happens with something like select element or input type date on mobile? You know, when you have this kind of element on mobile and you tap on them, you usually get a kind of date picker or something like that. So do they support your input or not? For example, in the browser, yes, I can click. I, I get the focus ring because it supports your input. I can edit it. But what happens on a mobile phone? So that's led, left open to decide by the different browser engines like they want to show it or not in that case because you cannot interact with the keyboard or maybe you can if you have an external keyboard so that some of the slight difference that can happen between one and other implementation this is another heuristic if the user interacts with the page via keyboard we should indicate focus this is something that everyone's agree I and mean, it's clear that keyboard navigation you'll indicate focus. So when you navigate, I'm clicking tab now or shift tab to move over the different buttons here, you see where is the focus. This is important for users that use the keyboard to navigate the page and for accessibility reasons. Another heuristic, and this is quite important one, is if the user interacts with the page with a pointing device like a mouse or the thumb on a touch screen, we shouldn't indicate focus. That's like the key part of this feature, like the problem we saw at the beginning, like you click the button and you don't want to see the focus ring. So when you click on a button or a tab tip with tab index, something like that, you don't you don't want to see the focus ring. So I click on these buttons and I don't see the focus ring. That's expected behavior. And when I tap navigate, I see them, so that's fine. I click and I don't see them. That's mostly the the key part, the thing that Focus Visual wants to fix. Give the chance to web authors to have this behavior. So there is another thing that is on the spec regarding the default user agent style sheet. This is the the style sheet that the browsers Define and that's the default on the different browsers. This this style sheet used to use focus pseudo class directly to draw an outline when the element is focused. But the spec says that the user agent should, should now use focus visible when this is implemented. So the web authors won't, won't need to disable the default focus style. So when focus visible appear like 2018, in this case, this tweet from Lia Veru that explains how to avoid this issue. Like the default is agent style sheet didn't use focus visible yet, it was using focus. So we want to disable the focus, but only when focus visible was not supported. So only for browsers that don't support it and things like that. We could not just remove it totally. So that was a kind of workaround. While the user agent style sheet 
don't, don't use focus. Focus visible directory, like, like the spec set. And even checking more details of the user agent style sheet, default style sheets. In this case, WebKit use, doesn't use focus. It uses something different that is this dash internal dash direct focus. So this is something internal, an internal pseudo class. It's not web exposed. So only the user agent style sheet can use it. And this was added just to avoid one thing that was showing a double, a double focus ring when you focus something inside a shadow DOM. Because when you focus something inside a shadow DOM, like this input here, the shadow root also gets focused, so will match focus pseudo class. But you don't want to see these two outlines, like you are here and here seeing two focus indicators. That's pretty weird. So they added this internal direct focus to avoid that. And with focus visible, you will avoid that. I mean, the, there are tests to check that when you focus something inside a shadow DOM, the, the shadow root doesn't get a, a focus ring. So that's the introduction about the focus visible feature. I hope you now understand it better. And now I'm going to talk about this open prioritization experiment that Igalia was is running and that led to the implementation of Focus Visible on WebKit. Basically, this is a kind of experimenting crowdfunding implementation of web platform features for different browsers. So we started this like in mid-2020, where we suggested a few tasks to do in different browsers. They were for all the browsers, not just WebKit. They were for Chromium, for WebKit, for Firefox. They were tasks that can be done and the browsers will accept them, but that have, haven't yet been prioritized by the teams that develop those browsers. For many reasons, sometimes a task is not important for that particular browser vendor and they don't work on it. But there is the chance that the company like Kigalia can implement that, that feature. So in this case, we wanted to try to crowdfund that and see how many people would be interested. So people was pledging money to the different features and the winner was Focus Visual in WebKit. This one, the one that get more interest. So we started to, to get funds for implementing it in WebKit. People was donating money and we reached these $30,000 dollars and we started to work on the implementation. We got like 75 contributors, that's a huge amount. P different people put different money, there were even organizations putting bigger amounts of money. We are really glad to all these contributors, thanks to all of them. Now we have an implementation of Focus Visual in WebKit that was not around before that. This, So we believe this was a successful experiment and we are willing to repeat it in the future. Even the web community as a whole, the possibility to sponsor some features and to prioritize them and make them happen. So this is going to be a summary of the work that has been done around this feature in WebKit and not only in WebKit, as we will see. So basically, the implementation has been done mostly since January to May 2021. During that time, every month, there was a report on my blog. You can find there a lot of information about how the things were moving and how the implementation evolved. And now, nowadays, the WebKit implementation is really behind a runtime flag. It hasn't been shipped yet, and we will talk more about that later. But it's passing all the tests with just some slight differences depending on the platform and things like I said before, this input type data kind of things that can vary depending on the platform. If you want to try it on Safari, you should enable the experimental feature on the develop experimental features menu. This, there is a one that is called Focus Visible Pseudo Class, so it's very easy to find. And yeah, this work involved Patches in WebKit, that's kind of expected, that was the main part of the work. But at the same time, we also did 
a bunch of patches on Web Platform Test Repository. This repository is a shared test suite between all the browser vendors. So when you implement a CSS feature or a Web Platform feature, you add tests to this repository, so the rest of the browser vendors can use them when, when they implement it too. But there were also patches in Chromium because there were some missing things or small changes that we were also doing in Chromium. And even there were changes in the HTML and CSS specs. Not big changes, but a few changes from us. So this work involved patches in many places. And even if we could have time, there could be even the chance to do some small things in Firefox for sure. So even when this was the third implementation of Focus Visible, Firefox and Chromium already had it, there were still work to do everywhere when you work on interoperability of different features. One thing, for example, is the user agent style sheet. Back in January of this year, nobody was using Focus Visible yet in the user agent style sheet. And thanks to this work, in our case, Igalia changed Chromium style sheet to use Focus Visible, and Mozilla does the same in Firefox, following like the work we have been doing here. So thanks in part to this effort, we have now Focus Visible in both style sheets which means that the workaround that we were seeing before, this focus not focus visible, is not needed anymore. And yeah, regarding the web platform test, like I say, this is a test suite shared by all the browser engines. But the, I mean, despite we were the third implementation, the tests were not in a very good shape. So we had need to fix a bunch of things there. To make them work properly in all the platforms, we need to add new tests to cover some corner cases. And we ended up like with 40 tests after all this work, just for this small feature. <laughs> and the tests use WebDriver. This is the same software that the same kind of thing that Selenium and that kind of software use to test things like click here or type this letter or whatever. And we also had to add some missing bits in WebKit to be able to run all these tests properly. And this is the current test and the current status. As we see there are mostly interoperability for most of the things. Of course, Safari is not passing the test because it hasn't enabled the feature yet. So this is not with experimental feature, this is with the final I mean, the things that are shipped in Safari. But if you enable the flag, most of them, if not all, will pass. So, yeah, we have been working. We have an implementation, but it's not shipped yet. So clearly, next steps and the main goal is to ship Focus Visible in WebKit. And like, if you ship in WebKit, it will be shipped in Safari at some point in the future. That was what people was paying for, and we hoped to reach this goal at some point. So let's explain why we are not there yet. The Mac platform has some platform conventions that are different to other platforms like Windows or Linux. So for example, on Mac platform, buttons are not click focusable. So when you are editing an input, on an application, a Mac application, and you click a button, the button doesn't get focused and you can still carry on editing that input field. For that reason, the buttons are not uh, click focusable in Safari either. So when you click on a button in Safari, the focus doesn't move there. On the rest of the browsers, even on Mac, the focus moves to the, to the button. And on Windows and Linux, yeah, the, the focus moves to the bottom when you click on it. But in Safari, this is different. The focus is, doesn't remain on an input. If you are editing an input and you click a button on Safari, the focus is not in the input anymore. The focus is kind of like if you click in the body or whatever, it's gone. It's like you did blur, blur in the input. But still, they are not click focusable. So it's a different thing. And Apple wants to be sure that Focus Visual change. 
the change that it implies are aligned with the platform conventions. So there was a bunch of discussion around all that. This link is a pretty old WebKit bug, 2008, that explains quite a lot of things about why buttons are not click focusable in Safari if you want to read more. Some examples of the conversations and the discussions that have been around this is that initially, like I mean, buttons are not click focusable on Mac, so they are not an issue. When you click them, you never get a focus ring on Mac, on Safari Mac, so that's totally fine. But what happens when you click a deep tab index? You will see a focus ring. You, you see a focus ring these days. And Apple was kind of reluctant, initially at least, to hide the focus ring on click on a deep tab index. There was also the discussion around the possibility that maybe they could be open to hide it if we get give more information, like roll button to this tip. So when you click that, that is trying to be like a button, maybe they will be open to don't show the focus ring. But still, there were we were not totally sure about what to do here because like you are clicking something, the focus is moving there. But the user doesn't know. And we were wondering how this affects user interaction. For example, in Safari, you can scroll with the spacebar. So for example, you are editing an input, you click a button, you don't see that the fuck is moved there, but you click the spacebar and you are like clicking the button again and again and again. So there was this issue in the Focus Visible GitHub repo that has a lot of interesting conversations around all this. And the current status of all these conversations with Apple about shipping Focus Visible, one important thing is that Apple showed, showed interest on the last Web Contributors meeting past September to help to move Focus Visible to be a shippable feature in, in Safari and WebKit. The conversations are still ongoing. The last Updates have been really positive, and since the Apple is willing to help to make this happen, and also that maybe, I mean, there's not totally clear what's going to be the final behavior, but the interoperability thing, like now Firefox and Chromium works mostly the same with Focus Visible, Mate has an important role, and probably waiting in the decision if. Focus Visible should be totally interoperable with Chromium and Firefox or should have some slight difference in, in Safari. So this is like kind of pretty good news regarding the future. And there is even something else that is part of this discussion. Like somehow something that appeared out of this discussion is not totally related, but is kind of related and will be something like a new proposal. This doesn't have the shape of a proposal yet, but I want to share anyway. This could be a new HTML attribute that identifies an element that is keyboard focusable, but not mouse focusable. So an element that you can focus with the keyboard, but not when you click on it or when you tap on it in a touch screen. So this will allow the web authors to mimic the Mac platform conventions regarding focus. And it can be useful in some use cases, we believe. So maybe this could be proposed and implemented in all the browsers. This will be something different than Focus Visible that are also useful for web authors to do some kind of use cases. And this is not totally new on the platform because we already had things like tab index minus one that already allows an element to make an element not keyboard focusable. So these buttons. I can tab navigate, but I will skip the one with tab index one, minus one, sorry. So you make this element not keyboard focusable, but still you can click on it and it will get focusable. Not focused on, on Mac on Safari, but on the rest of browsers. And if this was a dip, a regular dip, you could skip, but you could, I mean, making. You could still focus it with the click, but not with the, with the keyboard. So this new attribute will be kind of something similar, but avoid making something 
most focusable, you still want the buttons to be keyboard focusable for users that use the keyboard to navigate, but you don't want them maybe to, to be mouse focusable to follow that kind of web platform, Mac, web pla Mac platform convention, sorry. So you could develop this kind of use case like I, I'm typing here. You click on the button. I'm not actually clicking on the button because otherwise I will lose the focus. The button shows some extra info and you continue typing. So that's the kind of use case that will allow this new attribute. And just to finish this presentation with some good vibes, this is a picture of a really awesome bo book that I really like, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie McKessie. And this picture says, we have such a long way to go, sighed the boy. And yeah, I mean, Focus Visible hasn't been shipped yet, we have a long way to go. Yes, but look how far we have come, said the horse. But we have already walked a long path and have done a lot of things and we are closer than ever to ship Focus Visual and work. So hopefully by the end of the year, early next year, Focus Visual could be shipped, enabled by default on WebKit, and included in future Safari releases. So that's all for my talk for today. Thank you everyone for attending the talk. I hope you enjoyed it. This is my email account and my Twitter account. You can talk to me, ask me any question about Igalia, about Focus Visible or the CSS features in general, whatever you're interested on. And yeah, that's all. This presentation will be available on my blog too, just in case you want to check the slides or whatever. And that's all from my side. Thanks again to the organization for having me the chance to be here speaking today. And that's all. Bye.